This happened just a few months into my delivery career. I was 19 and got hired by Domino's to work at a store that lost its franchise status and had been taken over by a corporation. Most of the staff had been fired and they were still trying to get more people in, so everything was always hectic. Almost every order during rush hour was late and every driver was working 60 hours a week. This was incidentally my last night in the store. I was transferring to work at a store close to my college. That night, the local university had just had its students move back in, so everything was extra late and I was working open to close. When I take this guy's order out, it is alongside three other orders, and he's the last on the list. By the time I get to him, the order is an hour and a half late. Nothing I can do about it, and the guy was warned that this could happen. So I pull up and notice the entire place is dark, which should have set off my alarm bells, but I figure his lights are burnt out, or he gave up on me coming due to how late the order was. I knock and the door opens. The first thing I notice is that the room is completely red. It's lit by a heat lamp over a cage, and the walls are painted red. There's no furniture besides the cage, which has some lizard in it. Then I notice the guy standing in front of me. If you've ever read those scary stories to tell in the dark books, you might be able to imagine what he looked like. He's clearly strung out on something. He's stick thin and there are track marks up both his arms. His skin looks yellowish, even in the red light, and his eyes are bloodshot sunken pits. His hair reminds me of the stringy dead moss you see hanging off trees in the winter. There are scabs all over his chin. His nails are grown out thick, like yellow claws. I swallow back whatever I'm feeling at that moment and apologize for his order being late. He just stares at me. Then I tell him the price of his order. That's when he talks. His voice sounds like gravel and he says in a low tone which gradually gets louder with every word. You fucking X chromosomes deny me your fucking bodies? And now my fucking food? I say no, I have your food right here sir, but he suddenly lurches at me, grabbing in the vicinity of my hair. I say he lunged, but I don't think he was capable of that much, and he misses by a wide margin. I'm not having any of that shit, so I toss the pizza in his general direction and run back to my car. My boss refuses to even blacklist the guy, and won't even give me a break to slow my heart down before trying to send me out the door with another run. I walked out and never looked back. The story took place back when I was working as a pizza delivery boy for some local pizza shop near my house. One Saturday night, a call came in around 11.45 and asked for a delivery. My boss was about to say that we don't deliver after 11.30, but the person ordered 8 large pizzas and wanted someone to drop them off at their house, which was located far away from the shop. My boss, being the cheapskate that he is, demanded the order to be made and delivered it because 8 large pizzas was a lot of money inside his pocket. Unfortunately for me, my boss decided that I would be the one to deliver. I typed the address into my phone and saw that it was an almost 30 minute drive just to get to this person's house. Since cooking 8 large pizzas take a while to make, I was probably going to arrive at this person's house around 1 in the morning. I was a little annoyed that I had to stay so late, but I tried to look on the bright side of things and told myself that I was probably going to receive a generous tip given the lateness of the hour, the amount of pizzas that we ordered, and the distance from the shop. After about 35 minutes the pizzas were finally done, so I put them in my car and set off toward the address. I arrived around 1 o'clock just like I predicted and drove my car up the steep driveway to an impressively big house. I sat in my car for a while and took in everything around me before getting out. Even though the house looked very nice, the front yard was in horrible condition. We don't get any snow from where I'm from, so the grass continues growing all year round, and this grass looked like it hadn't been cut for several months. That was the first thing that I noticed. The second thing was the fact that this gigantic house was located in the middle of nowhere up on this hill, and from where I was sitting in the car, it looked like nobody was home. There were no cars in the driveway, and the lights in the house were not on, yet this house ordered 8 large pizzas to be delivered. I was hesitant about getting out of my car, but I finally did and walked up to the front door in hopes that this would all be over soon. I was about to ring the doorbell when I saw a piece of paper taped to the door. Dear pizza boy, please come in. Do not ring the bell. Thank you. 
That was strike three for me. I had a bad feeling about this house, ever since I pulled in, but now I was certain that something fishy was going on. This definitely felt like some kind of trap to me, and even though I don't live in a bad neighborhood, I still didn't want to be abducted by someone. I disobeyed what the note said and rang the bell anyway. I waited a few minutes, but no one answered. I knocked on the door, then placed my ear closer to the wood and listened for any noises coming from inside the house. Hearing nothing, I just stood there on this person's porch in the middle of the night with eight pizzas and no idea what to do next. I wanted to get back in my car and just tell my boss that no one was at the house, but that would really piss him off if I came back with eight large pizzas and no money, even though it wouldn't be my fault. I stood there a little while longer, not moving, until I finally reached up for the handle to go inside. But then I remembered something. A couple of weeks earlier, a young kid named Billy Holmes was abducted in broad daylight, not even three miles from where this house was. Like I said before, I don't live in a bad neighborhood, so when Billy got kidnapped, it was pretty big news in our town, because we're not used to such events. I took my hand away from the handle, convincing myself that delivering these pizzas wasn't worth my life. I turned around and was about to walk back to my car when I heard someone say something from inside the house. Come in! Someone shouted. The voice definitely came from a woman, but she sounded far away, like she was on the opposite side of the house or something. I went back to the door and knocked again. Come in please, I'm upstairs. The woman's voice yelled. I eased up a little bit when I heard the voice, but I was still skeptical about the whole thing. The woman said, I'm upstairs, implying that she was the only one there, which would be weird considering she ordered eight pizzas. I told myself that I was just being paranoid, but there was a very small nagging feeling in the back of my mind that I immediately suppressed. I slowly opened the door, making sure that the canister of pepper spray around my keychain was within reach. The inside of the house was very similar to the condition of the yard, unkempt. I kept the front door open just in case I needed to make a quick escape, and then set the pizzas down on a table that was a few feet in front of me. There was a pile of mail stacked up in the center of the table that was spilling over the edge onto the floor. Most of the lights in the house were off except for one in the room I was currently standing in and the one located at the top of a large staircase that was to my right. I heard the voice again. It was coming from the top of the steps, but I couldn't see anybody. I'll be down in a minute, she said, only this time it didn't sound right. Something was off about her voice. I hadn't noticed it when I was standing outside, but now since it was much clearer, I could tell that it wasn't a woman's voice. Well, it was, but it didn't sound natural. It sounded like a man doing an imitation of a woman's voice. Fuck this, I said to myself. I'm out of here. There had been red flags going off ever since I parked my car, but this was the final straw. I left the pizzas on the table so they wouldn't trip me up if I had to start running. I turned around and was about to leave through the front door when I stopped dead in my tracks. Right as I was exiting the house, I saw a shadowy figure dart across the sidewalk into the high grass covering the yard. Standing where I was in the doorway, I could make out the silhouette of something crouching in the grass off to my left, about 20 yards in front of me. It was dark out, so I could barely make out the figure crouching in the yard. But from where I was standing, I could tell that there was something off about it. The thing had a very small head, barely bigger than that of a baby. But the rest of its body looked like it belonged to a full-grown man. Also, I wasn't 100% sure but I thought that I could see a short, thick tail wagging behind this thing, like a lion stalking its prey. I couldn't see its eyes, but I knew that it was looking at me. I was certain. I backed up into the house and closed the door, locking it firmly. Great, I thought. Now I'm stuck in here with the man upstairs pretending to be a woman. I reached into my pocket for my phone, but it wasn't there. Shit, I left my phone in my car. I was completely screwed, but I wasn't just going to lay down and die. I needed to find another exit. The stairs were to my right, so I went left down a large hallway hoping to find a back door or something and make it back to my car somehow. The lights were off throughout the rest of the house, so I took it slow and steady and frantically searched around with my hand to make sure I didn't trip over a pile of junk lying on the floor. All my senses were turned up to 200%. I heard every little creak the house made and was navigating through the darkness as quietly as I could. I had no idea who else was in the house with me. 
I passed many boarded up windows and locked doors, but I was not losing hope. I'd tear through one of those windows if it came to that, but for now, I wanted to remain quiet. I made it to the end of the hallway with only one door remaining. I twisted the handle and I reluctantly started to turn with a sharp metal on metal noise that pierced through the silence of the house. I pushed on the door and it creaked open. There was a noise behind me like breaking glass and I turned around to find that the light that was shining near the front door was out. I know you're in here. The voice boomed from down the hallway no longer sounding anything like a woman. I went into the now open room in front of me and shut the door. There was no lock and I didn't have time to find the light switch but I didn't need to. Several candles were burning throughout the room, their wax forming puddles around the floor from overuse. A pentagram was scrawled on the floor in what I could only imagine was blood. A chair was set in the middle of pentagram with a pile of something lying in the seat leaking blood all over the ground. From behind the door I could hear footsteps thundering down the hall at a steady confident pace like the man knew I was trapped. I looked around the room and noticed that moonlight was shining in through the window that was located in the back wall. Unlike all the other windows I passed, this one was not boarded up. I ran towards the window acting before thinking and dived towards freedom just as I heard the door opening up behind me. The glass shattered around me and I felt several sharp pains throughout my body as shards of glass sliced parts of my arms and face. I hit the ground hard but was up in a flash and sprinted around to the front of the house trying my hardest to make it through the tall grass without tripping. I looked back only once to see if I was being chased but no one was following me. I saw the briefest glimpse of a figure standing behind the window that I broke through, but it didn't look like the man was going to chase after me. He just stood there behind the broken window, and as I was rounding the corner of the house with my car now in sight, I could make out his heavy laughter from across the yard. I pulled open my car door and threw myself in with one quick motion. I started the car and nearly crashed into a tree as I sped away down the driveway. I didn't see that weird creature that was crouching in the grass earlier. But as I was driving away, I looked back in my rear view mirror and noticed that the front door of the house was open even though I locked it before searching for a way out. I made sure that I was far away from that house before grabbing my phone and calling the police. I told the operator everything in a crazed mad rush of words and also mentioned that I was in need of medical attention. The operator told me the help was on the way and not too long after that I could hear police sirens approaching from the distance. After the police arrived, everything was just one big blur. The rest of the story I followed on my local news broadcast, as did basically every other person in that town. I was expecting the story to be like something right out of a horror movie. What really ended up happening though was even more disturbing than what I originally thought. The owners of the house were a really rich old couple who were currently living in Florida. They used the house as a summer home at one point, but they hadn't been back for a very long time and were not planning on coming back, so they decided to give the house to one of their grandsons while they continued to pay the bills for it. The man that was there when I was delivering the pizzas was in fact the old couple's grandson. On the night that he was arrested, he admitted that he killed three people over the past six months and was planning on killing me as well. Two of the three victims were an unlucky couple that had been visiting family from out of town. The other person was Billy Holmes the little boy that I remembered had gone missing a few weeks earlier. All I could think of was I would have been the fourth person he killed. This was in 2015. My sister and I are home alone watching Craigslist horror stories on YouTube. A bit ironic, I know. Now for reference, I was 13 while my sister was 17 and having these watch parties had become something of a habit as it was our last year together before she went off to college. We lived in a safe neighborhood and nothing had ever really happened at that point that would give us any reason to be anxious about being alone. Anyways, time goes on and my sister suggests we order a pizza since she's starving. I'm not one to turn down pizza so I naturally agreed and we placed an order at a local pizza place. We continue watching our videos for another 15 to 20 minutes before I step out to use the restroom. Just then, I hear the doorbell ring followed by my sister getting up to go answer it. So I carry on with my business with the assumption it was just the pizza. I say only two minutes had passed as I came back and realized my sister was still at the door talking with someone. 
I couldn't really make out what was being said, but I knew it was definitely a man's voice responding to her. As I go to see what's going on, my sister promptly shuts the door, pizza in hand. I initially assumed maybe there was just an issue with the payment, so I just teased my sister for taking so long and going to sit down. It didn't take long for me to realize, though, that my sister wasn't eating, despite this whole thing being her idea, and even more so, she had a very nervous look on her face now, and wasn't speaking much. I asked her what was up, and she proceeded to tell me that when she opened the door to greet the pizza guy, he looked at her as if he was checking her out and following up by giving her the most unsettling smile she's ever seen. She was just trying to get the pizza and go as we had already paid online, but the creep insisted on trying to make conversation with her. The man pretended to fumble around trying to get the pizza out of his bag, all while asking very personal questions that he certainly had no business asking, like how old she was and if she was alone. Now I admittedly thought she was just messing with me. I mean, stuff like that can never actually happen to people, you know? Right? But nevertheless, it still left me feeling a bit anxious. We tried to enjoy the food and move on, and I say about an hour or two later, we had finally calmed down about the whole thing. Right as we were getting ready to clean up and go back to our own rooms, there's a knock at the door, a very loud and aggressive one at that. We share the same nervous look, then hesitantly slip over to a window to see if we can get a look at whoever's knocking. Now I hadn't seen the guy, but my sister immediately recognized him as the pizza guy from before. We were contemplating calling the police, but the guy only knocked once or twice more before getting in his car and taking off way too fast down the road. Almost like he knew if he continued he was more than likely going to end up in a lot of trouble. We made a round around the house, making sure everything was locked up, and then waited for what felt like ages for our parents to finally get home. My sister told them about what happened, but our mom insisted we were just being dramatic, that we had just made ourselves nervous because of the videos we were always watching. While we both initially insisted on being serious, we eventually just gave up and tried to move on from the whole thing. We ordered from that place a few more times, but thankfully never saw that same delivery man again. Nothing else ever really came of the situation, but I can't help but think about what could have happened if that creep had been just a bit more persistent.